Hey, Harvester Kids. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, now I'll. Ta da! It's off. Got this again. Let's get this started. Let's do it. Ten, Ten nine, nine, eight, seven, six, six five, four, three, two, two one! <laughs> I win! Welcome to the So and So Show! I'm Brandon, that's John. You bet I am. And you would not believe how excited I am about today's oh, show. Oh, I haven't been this excited since I woke up and realized I have last night's bubble gum in my mouth and it still has flavor. Oh, what was the flavor? Sour apple. You want some? Just tuck it in there in my hard palate. Well, we're excited because we have got a killer show. Yes, we do! Today, we are gonna play a game using these. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. What are these? What, it, it, robot parts. We're building robots today. Awesome. Do you know how to build a robot? No, I don't have the first clue. But I, I thought we could use a robot expert on the show to help us out. So I made a few calls. Everyone I talked to uh, recommended the same person. She's been building robots for half her life. She's won all kinds of awards. If anyone can help us build a robot, it is her. Well, now I am excited. Who is this robot expert? Let's meet her together, shall we? <laughs> Please welcome someone who knows stuff. <laughs> hey, guys. Hey, <laughs> come on in. Have a seat. What, you're, you're the robot expert? Been building them for half my life. And how long would that be? Since I was six. Wow. Huh. 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 Uh, well, tell us who you are and what you know. My name's Mishka, and I'm a 17-time robotics competition grand champion. <laughs> what? That is amazing and also convenient uh -huh. because John and I need help building a robot for a game we're going to play. Do you, do you mind helping? Not at all. All right. Okay, as you can see, we got all the parts right here. We just don't know where to start. Okay, why don't we start with separating out what you've got so we know what we're working with. Cool. Brandon, you grab the geared motors. John, you grab the ADT gears and the worm gears, and I'll separate out the sprockets and the rest of the parts. Uh, go. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, we don't know what any of this stuff is. Yeah, uh, 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 is this a wormy gear? No, that's a wheel. <laughs> a motor? Okay. A gasket. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> what is this? Einstein, Bose, Newton, Curry, McGuire. That would be a toothpick. Oh. oh. <laughs> um, you know what? <laughs> Forget sorting the parts. I can walk you through the build. Let's start with putting the short axle into the geared motor. Then we insert the anchor pins through the 11-hole rod into the three-hole dual rod. And those attach to the top of the geared motor. Is this it? Einstein, Bose, Newton, Curry, McGuire. Are those, are those other parts you just mentioned in here too? I... No, they're... They're... Einstein, Bose, Newton, Curry, MacGyver. They're famous physicists. Oh! Yeah, it's a little thing I do when I get impatient or frustrated. Some people count to five, others take three deep breaths. I name physicists. Oh. It works for me. Oh, I, I'm sorry that we're frustrating you. We've, we've just never built a robot before, so. Oh, I totally understand. 
I just get impatient sometimes when people don't understand things as fast as I do. Oh, <laughs> I totally get that. It's like me trying to tell my dad how to program the VCR. <laughs> What's a VCR? Oh. <laughs> What's a VCR? What's a VCR? <laughs> Einstein knows Fig Newton Spree's Magnum P.I. Yeah, hey, that works. <laughs> How about this? I'll just build the robots for you so you can play your game. Oh, I love deal. that idea. Go yeah. for it. Uh, several minutes later. There you go. Oh. 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 Look at that. These are amazing. Thank you. Oh, no. Thank you. And thank you for having so much patience with us. No problem. <laughs> It's time to play Robo Robo! <laughs> okay, the rules are simple. Brandon's trying to knock my robot off the desk, and I'm trying to do the same to his robot. Whoever does it wins. You ready? I've never been more ready for Go! Oh, uh, uh, look at that. Look how much bigger. Oh, oh, come on. I gotta use some different tactics here. Oh! Oh! Oh, I'm gonna have into you! No! Oh, oh yes! Oh. Yes! That's no fair, you had a bulldozer thing. <laughs> Victory lap! <laughs> Can't turn my wheels! <laughs> oh, my, my hinge fell off! I win! That was awesome, hey! Brandon, hey, let's go again! Let's go again! Okay, well, we may need Mishka to help put our robots back together again. It's true. Until then, it's Bible story time with Kellen. Yes! Hey guys, cool robots. Did you build those? No. no. Okay. We really didn't have the patience for it, so uh, our friend Mishka built them for us. Mm -hmm. What have you got for us today? I have something fun, and it's all about patience. Perfect! Take it away! The Israelites had been in slavery in Egypt for many years, until God chose a man named Moses to help lead them to freedom. For the first time in their lives, the Israelite people were free, and they were waiting to go to their new home. This story is all about what happened while they waited. For hundreds of years, God's people lived as slaves in Egypt. They cried out to God, and God rescued them. He led them through the midst of the Red Sea to freedom in the wilderness. And that's where he showed his love and care by providing bread from heaven and water from solid rock. Three months later, God led his people to Mount Sinai, where they camped at the foot of the mountain in the desert. Moses was called to by God from the mountain. Say to my people, the Israelites, you have seen for yourselves what I did to Egypt. You saw how I carried you on the wings of eagles and brought you to myself. Now obey me completely. If you do, then out of all the nations, you will be my special treasure. Moses shared God's word with the people. We will do everything the Lord has said. God called Moses to meet with him on the mountaintop. Moses spoke to the elders of the Israelites before he left. Wait here until I come back. My brother Aaron and Hur will stay with you. Anyone who has a problem can go to them. Don't sweat it. We got this. No one can come up. The mountain is holy. Noted. I'll see you soon-ish. Have fun storming the mountain. As Moses and his assistant Joshua began to climb the steep slopes, the glory of God settled on Mount Sinai like thick cloud and burning fire. I will give you stone tablets. They contain the law and commandments I have written to teach the people. Moses stayed within the cloud on top of Mount Sinai, talking with God for 40 days and nights. Meanwhile, back at the camp, the Israelites were growing restless. I'm so, like, over this desert camping thing. Yeah, that Moses seems kind of unreliable to me. Yeah, what if he's making up all the God stuff? You know, besides the cloud and the Red Sea and food from heaven and all that. Uh, 
He's certainly taking long enough. Hey, Aaron, where's your brother? Aaron shrugged and pointed to the cloud that hovered over the mountain. Uh, uh, you know as much as I do. We need someone to really take charge. A god we can see, a god who will lead us. Moses may have brought us out of Egypt, but he's just disappeared. Poof. What are you going to do, Aaron? Aaron was tired of the people's complaining, so he buckled under pressure. Ha <laughs> uh, well, uh, give me all your gold jewelry. Aaron took all the gold the people brought him and melted it down. Then he shaped it into the form of a golden calf. Israel, here is your God who brought you out of Egypt. It's like so shiny. Well, when Aaron saw how excited the people were, he built an altar in front of the calf. Tomorrow will be a feast day. So all the next day, the Israelites brought sacrifices to honor a golden calf made out of their own jewelry. The people ate, drank, and danced wildly in front of the statue. Who wants to walk like an Egyptian, huh? Not me, we just got out of there, thanks to this amazing calf. Back on the mountain, in the midst of the cloud, God spoke to Moses. Go down. Your people you brought up out of Egypt have become very sinful. They have turned away from what I commanded. Heartbroken, Moses and Joshua made their way back down the mountain. Moses carried two heavy stone tablets covered with the laws God had given. The two men stopped in their tracks. Wait, is that the sound of war? It's not the sound of winning or losing, that's singing. <sighs> Moses and Joshua picked up their pace, scrambling down the mountainside. As they approached the camp, Moses saw the golden calf, dazzling in the sunlight. The Israelites danced wildly around it. Inconceivable! Moses was so angry, he took the stone tablets and hurled them to the ground. Stop! Stop this at once! The music and dancing stopped. Moses marched right through the crowd, right up to the golden calf. Aaron tried to sheepishly duck away, but Moses spotted him at once. What did these people do to you? How did they make you lead them into such terrible sin? Okay, don't be angry. You know how these people are. They, they said, make us a god to lead us. And? And then they gave me their gold jewelry. And? And I threw it into the fire, and out came this calf. Aaron couldn't look his brother in the eye. They both knew the true story. Why didn't you wait for me? The people are running wild. We've, we've become a joke to our enemies. Moses toppled the golden calf into the fire to burn. Then he ground the golden calf into a fine powder and scattered it on the water. Drink it, all of you. This is hard to drink. Oh. My stomach feels downright awful. God helped his people over and over. But when they had to wait, they forgot his goodness. They chose their own way. And the consequences weren't so golden. What a story! The ending is a little dark. That's true. But impatience has consequences, right? As soon as the Israelites had to wait on God, they turned their backs on him. They forgot what they knew was true. They forgot how God loved them so very much and had rescued them from slavery. They forgot about the miracles and how God had provided for them. You know, I, I think I forget about what God can do sometimes when I'm impatient. Oh, oh, me too. Hey, we all do. When things are tough and they're taking way too long to get better, it's like we forget everything we know about God. We should be consistently reminding ourselves of how good and how powerful God really is. Wow, good stuff. And thank you, Kellen. You're welcome. I'll see you guys later. No, Kellen's right, you know. Well, that's usually the case. Yeah. Anytime I'm impatient, I'm always thinking, this will never get better. It's going to be this way forever. The microwave will never stop counting down. Just have to change what I think about. I think you're on the right track there, buddy.
Reveal the question! What can you think about when it's hard to wait? Oh. Like Mishka today, she thinks about famous physicists when she's feeling impatient. You can also count to 10 or take deep breaths. Oh, you can recite a Bible verse in your head or say it out loud. I like Psalm 27, 14. Wait for the Lord, be strong and don't lose hope. Wait for the Lord. What about you? What do you think about when it's hard to wait? Yeah, talk about it together. And we'll see you next time on the So and So Show. Bye. I'm going to get you. This is a lot more I fun think, when they were put together. I think we need Mishka back. I think we do too. Ah! Oh! Ah! You're going down, buddy. We're not going anywhere. I know. I just broke hey, the remote. Hey, hey, hey. Tread lightly. Yeah. I should have had more patience. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> Every time I'm feeling down, you pick me up. Sing. I'm grateful for the way you've been a friend to me. Sing. Oh, oh, oh. And even in the deepest, darkest night, you help me see. Sing it out now. Oh, oh, oh. I just want to say thank you for the way you love me. I want to say thank you. confession to make. I didn't eat the cookies! I had patience! I have another confession to make. Sometimes I don't have patience. No, sometimes I'm more like the Israelites in the story. I trick myself into thinking I can't wait for what I want. Have you ever done that? Have you ever eaten a snack when you weren't supposed to because you couldn't wait until dinner? Have you ever found the secret hiding place for presents because you couldn't wait until your birthday to find out what you got? A lot of us have done those things even though we know better. 
Maybe instead of tricking ourselves into thinking we can't wait, we can remember what's true. Instead of eating that snack you're not supposed to, remember it spoils your appetite at dinner time. Instead of sneaking around and looking for presents, remember how happy it makes others when they surprise you. And if you're waiting for something big, some pain to go away or sadness to end, remember what God has done in the past. Remember his miracles. Remember his son, Jesus, who died on a cross for us and who came back to life in three days. Ask God to help you control what you think. Here is the one thing to remember today. When you have to wait, remember what's true. It sounds easy to control what you think, but really it takes practice. Start now and who knows? Someday you may find yourself on a chocolate beach near a chocolate ocean feeling a warm chocolate breeze.